Shemin Della Varis is a co-leader of the Women's Rights Party New Zealand. As a social issues journalist, Shemin highlighted the challenges faced by women in Aotearoa. She wrote about the epidemic of violence against women, the gender pay gap and the lack of affordable childcare. A committed environmentalist, Shemin was a Green Party endorsed candidate for local government in 2022. She resigned her membership earlier this year in protest at the party's support for gender ideology. She remains active in the urban farms movement in West Auckland. Shemin has recently launched a new podcast to platform gender critical views. White Camellia. White Camellia features content by feminists, scientists, and academics and is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Buzzsprout. Welcome, Shemin. Kia ora. <laughs> Kia ora. Hey, um, Ina karanga maha o te ao wahine, tēnā koutou. Ina tangata moi moi a, tēnā koutou katoa. Ina mate huhua o te wā, ina kuia nga wahine tō suffrage, ina huia kai manua, i kore koutou e wari wari i a mātou. Haere koutou, haere koutou o ki o ki atu ai, o te aka a ko te rangi ki a rātou, o te aka a ko te whenua ki a tātou. Tēnā anō tātou katoa. E whakatau ki tēnei aki aki ai te katoa, me aro koe ki te hā o hine a huone. In English, greetings to you women from all over the world. To the people of the dream time across the Tasman, greetings. To those who have passed, our foremothers, the warrior women of the suffrage movement, we treasure your memories. You will never be forgotten. May you rest in peace and honour. I turn from the realm of the dead back to the living. To all gathered tonight, I offer this proverb. Pay heed to the dignity and the power of women. Kia ora, everyone. Thank you to the organisers for facilitating this webinar. I'm Shemin Delavaris. I'm co-leader of the Women's Rights Party, Aotearoa, alongside unionist and women's rights campaigner, Jill Ovens. 14 days out from national elections, we're taking every opportunity to be both visible and loud as a new force in the political landscape. When I say new, I mean that literally. We emerged small but perfectly formed five months ago in protest at the bone deep hostility shown to women at the Albert Park riot in Auckland in March, where Kelly J. Keane, Tanya Sturt, and another woman were assaulted. Labour Party Council member Jill Ovens got together with 20 women all of them outraged by police and government's tacit sanctioning of the violence meted out to the mainly older women who'd attended that day. Our members come from every imaginable political persuasion. Um, some, like myself, have spent years active in Green Party politics. All of us, though, were seeking a party that would stand in firm opposition to the sex self-identification legislation brought in at the end of 2021 as part of the new Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Act. I'll outline our concern about the Act's provisions further on. We now have more than 700 members. We've been officially registered for one month and we're on the ballot in every polling place around the country with a party list of 12 fabulous women candidates drawn from a wide range of backgrounds and expertise. We made a practical decision to stand as a list only party because of time constraints and we won't contest electoral seats until 2026. Last week, we commissioned a countrywide curia poll 
nearly half of the voters aged 18 to 39 and 46 percent of Aucklanders surveyed said they'd consider voting for the Women's Rights Party. That figure dropped to 31 percent when taken nationwide, but it's still really heartening to see that level of potential support. Early voting starts on Monday. Our biggest problem as a new party is letting voters know that we're on the ballot. So we're concentrating on actions that raise our visibility. This week, we launched a digital advertising campaign in all six of our largest cities to urge younger voters to give us their party vote. The ads will feature Youth Affairs spokeswoman Mackenzie Clark and New Zealand champion Kayaka and our sports spokeswoman, Marnie Fornyasek, and they're two of our 12 list candidates. While our website and social media campaigns are vital, we've really prioritized person-to-person campaigning. Jill Ovens has just completed a whirlwind two-week tour of every main center and small town in the country. She um, went in a camper van painted to serve as a mobile billboard. The tour also formed a crucial part of our nationwide party building efforts. We now have seven regions, each with their own coordinators and volunteers. We've had remarkable success with campaign fundraising, with merchandise sales and donations steady and rising. Um, I'll just add in here that post-election, we, um, because we've really only outlined our policy platform, we're going to really dig in deep and have a uh, policy retreat um, involving members of the council as well as those with specialist expertise. So that'll be in November and I'm really looking forward to it. So mainstream media has predictably ignored the emergence of the Women's Rights Party Although we have been lucky enough to get a regular slot on independent broadcaster Sean Plunkett's The Platform. As a former news and social issues journalist in print and radio, although some time ago, I have to say, I figured it made sense for us to generate our own gender critical news content. I mean, there was just really nothing out there. The result has been the release of a podcast available on Apple and Spotify and Buzzsprout. Um, there have been two episodes so far, uh, the second marking 130 years of women's suffrage in Aotearoa. It's called White Camellia after the flowers suffragists gave to their supporters in 1893. The project's being done on the smell of an oily rag, but in time the hope is to invest in quality equipment and expand the format to include interviews and panel discussions. and. Um, also post each video onto uh, uh, our YouTube channel. There's no substitute for real-time campaigning, though. Earlier this month on Suffrage Day, Auckland members unfilled a banner over a motorway bridge and waved signs. Um, we're all dressed in white as suffragettes. It was quite a picture. We collected signatures on a replica suffrage petition at the National Council of Women's Suffrage event. Wellington members, oh, it was amazing. They baked cakes and offered pieces to passers-by. And they decorated a statue of Catherine Mansfield with a suffrage scarf and balloons. Members went on to support the Lesbian Action for Visibility Aotearoa at a protest led by feminist economist Prue Hyman, who's also one of our candidates, outside the Ministry of Women's Affairs who, by the way, in 2019, uh, the Women's Women's Affairs or the Ministry for Women's Affairs um, just uh, snuck in and very under the radar the fact that they represented all women, including um, men who identify as women. Anyway, many Women's Rights Party members attended the amazing Let Women Speak event in Auckland on the 20th of of September. And the organisers, Tanya Sturt, who you'll hear from, Terry Lepanovich, Sabine Schneider and Marie Doherty did an incredible job. And the police presence was really strong this time, which was great. 
Um, Women's Rights Party members turned up in numbers to a debate on the topic of cancel culture in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, last week. Australian academic Holly Lawford-Smith was compelling as she listed the harms done to women by the current silencing of dissent and voices against gender ideology and trans activism. So this week I travelled to Christchurch and it was a really busy week. We were handing out flyers, Maryvale and and in the city centre, attending local election events. So regional networks, they're the veins and the arteries of the party. And so those of you who are in Aotearoa and party members know my heart and my, I'm so glad that you're with us. Um, we're confident that nurturing the flax roots will set us up for future success. One of the main drivers for the New Zealand Women's Rights Party was the introduction of self-identification in 2021. Uh, it came in under the Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Registration Act, it's such a mouthful, and it was passed unanimously and came into full effect in July this year. The outcome of the new legislation is that people can change the sex on their birth certificate with a simple declaration. It's worth touching upon because it's the most pressing issue for most of our members who view it as a mechanism to convert the domain of single sex spaces into unisex or mixed sex areas to the detriment of women and girls in particular. Our, par our party takes issue with the way the amendments were introduced well into the select committee process on the back of a 53 signature petition submitted by a trans lobbyist. Um, the police, the speeches by um, the MPs were really well worth reading. They're just um, not once are women's interests mentioned um, at all in any of their speeches or the impact on women and girls. So the Select Committee did receive 6,900 submissions and 69% of those opposed self-identification. So they opposed it on the grounds that it negatively impacted women's rights and safety. It disadvantaged women in sport and had major implications for the accuracy of the data on which health and social policy is based. So we find it pretty startling that not one MP in our country was prepared to take on board the views of the nearly 70% who have submitted against sex self-identification. The Department of Internal Affairs in its report on the Act stated that it found no evidence to suggest that self-ID would lead to men entering women's facilities despite the fact that there were at a time a number at the time sorry a number of well publicized cases of such incidents in jurisdictions such as Scotland Canada or and California the women's rights party wants the amendment repealed because it directly conflicts with the sex based rights guaranteed in the human rights act 1993 we view gender as an imprecise concept that refers to sex-based stereotypes and social performance. Introducing concepts based on gender into legislation creates a clash of rights within the same law. So it effectively puts us um, any time that we want to dispute this, any time when our interests conflict with that of a man who identifies as female, um, we are going to have to test that in law because of this conflict. The Conversion Practices Prohibition Legislation Act, which passed in 2022, was much more widely discussed and it attracted a whopping 100,000 submissions, the largest number ever received by a New Zealand parliament. Since its adoption, though, it's had a chilling effect on the ability of therapists, medical professionals and others to provide any option other than gender-affirming care to patients 
many of whom, as we know, are teenage girls. So we've got psychologists, therapists, midwives, uh, who are members of the Women's Rights Party, and they've joined up on the condition that they remain anonymous. They justifiably fear that supporting gender critical policies could put their livelihoods or their reputation at risk. So <clears throat> there you have it, a bit of a romp through the very short history of the Women's Rights Party. On October the 14th, Aotearoa will have a new government. The landscape of MMP means that one of the major parties, either Labour or National, will look to form a coalition with one or more of the smaller parties to get the numbers to govern. So far, only Winston Peters, um, the leader of the centre-right party New Zealand First, has been able to definitively answer the question, what is a woman, with any reference to biological reality? With the spectre of the Digital Safety Act on the horizon, we're bracing ourselves for a slew of acts relating to hate speech. While aspects of the free speech argument may not always benefit women, and we're very aware of this, especially in regard to unrestricted access to pornography, um, but the Women's Rights Party is rightly wary of any attempt to impose totalitarian restrictions on dissent. And we're wary because we've we've experienced it directly and we, we every on a daily basis. Anyway, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, when you stand at the foot of a mountain, the only direction is up. E mihi ana ki a koutou mō tā koutou arotahi i te rā nei. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Many thanks. Ah, kia ora. Um, nā mihi, Shaman. Thanks very much for that. And it's an extremely amazing achievement, I think, what the Women's Rights Party have achieved in such a short time. So congratulations to everybody. And I hope we do well in the election.